the fight in the book of Revelation is within us. I mean, the, the story clearly describes events that happen in the outer world, but it's very important for us to recognize that the dragon, the beasts are within us, as are the decisions that we make going forward. How much deeper will we merge with AI? We all carry around one of these things. We use it on a daily basis. We're addicted to it. We live by it. We live for it, some people. How much deeper will you go? Will you have it implanted in your, under your skin? Will you allow it then to be dictating your life? This is where we're at. And this is the, the choice and the decision all of us are going to have to make. The other decision that we have to make beginning right now is, do we seek to, to worship and devote ourselves to the image of God, to the light body within, or are we going to serve the image of the beast? We're gonna further clarify what I mean by the image of the beast. And to, for starters, what I mean by that is, is that we are now creating artificial life forms on this planet. And within the next few years, simultaneously with the singularity, which is the term for when the AI becomes smarter than we are, maybe by a little, maybe by a tremendous amount. Con running concurrent with the singularity is a movement, as we will see by technologists, to formulate or coagulate AI into a literal physical being that people will begin to worship. They already have uh, begun to worship some of these synthetic beings, as we'll see. So the other choice that we have is, are we going to use every moment of our life to create more love in the world or to perpetuate more fear? If we're perpetuating fear, obviously we know we're serving the beast. If we're serving an, uh, a higher frequency God, our creator, the, the image of God, then we're devoting our efforts towards love. And this obviously is where we need to be. We need to be at least... 50, 55, 60, 60, 75 percent love over fear. I understand it. It's, it's a tough fight within us. It's so easy to get into the fear. Every time we click on a website, it's fear. That's, that's what gets our attention. And that's what the beast wants. It wants our eyeballs. It wants our attention. It wants our eyeballs because the eyes are what? The window to the soul. And the soul is the ultimate goal of this beast. So let's look at this rainbow angel, some of the Christian art that portrays this scene where John the Revelator is visited by a mighty angel who came down out of heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow around his head and gave him a book to eat. This is a book of seven seals that contains this wisdom. And when John the Revelator ate it, he said it tasted like honey. Well, now that's very interesting because some people say, well, that must be some kind of a psychedelic mushroom or it's some kind of hallucinogenic substance that was dipped in honey. That's a very good possibility. However, we also know that the higher dimensional realms are referred to as the land of milk and honey, the promised land. And by that, what the esotericists mean is the higher frequency realm. And this is telling us that this, this, this star being, this celestial being, this rainbow angel of the Lord, is delivering this star food or manna to John the Revelator. And he eats it, he consumes it, he becomes this wisdom and is now able to peer into the higher dimensional or higher frequency, higher frequency world. The Apocalypse of Abraham also describes a rainbow angel of the Lord, whose name is Jael or Joel, who lived in the seventh heaven higher frequency realm, and was sent to Abraham, the Old Testament patriarch, to reveal the history of his people, and was also sent to Daniel uh, while he was in Babylon to reveal the future to him. So this is a, an intermediary, a messenger that routinely has been coming into human civilization, an extraterrestrial being bringing disclosure because that is another meaning of the word revelation. It not only means apocalypse, it also means disclosure that this, as the heavens open, this stargate, if you will, opens and this higher dimensional being enters into the earth plane, its goal is to disclose the secrets, not only of our true spiritual nature, but also the secrets of the higher dimensional realms. It's those secrets and that wisdom 
that transmutes our world and enables us to defeat the dragon and the two beasts that emerge from it. According to uh, the Apocalypse of Abraham, the appearance of the rainbow angel that appeared to Abraham and also Daniel, his body was like sapphire, the look of his countenance like chrysolite, the hair of his head like snow, and the turban upon his head like the appearance of a rainbow. So here we have another account where this being is described as rainbow-like. These images are drawn from Ezekiel's vision as well, who in the throne room of Solomon's temple, Ezekiel describes seeing something or someone like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, and so was the radiance around this being. So Ezekiel goes into the Holy of Holies and sees this, this image of this God being, the, the, the Lord of the Old Testament, sitting on the Ark of the Covenant as a being with a body of a rainbow, or what I'm going to say to you is a rainbow light body. This is a special class of beings, as we're going to discuss, the Tibetans are most familiar with, and also the Christians are familiar with, too. These are the highest frequency beings that we can see on this planet, and they've been coming and going for millennia, attempting to raise us into their own state of being, which, according to their teaching, is our true nature, our original state of being. Rainbow light body beings are beings of pure light and pure love, and that's who we are. We're just covered over by our flesh and blood bodies. Now, in the Essene uh, teaching, the Essenes being Jewish mystics who lived just before the time of Jesus and called Jesus in as from the high celestial realms, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the teaching of these angels is referred to as the perfect way, perfection of holiness, perfect holiness, walking in the way of perfection. And this teaching was given to the Essenes by these otherworldly beings who are referred to as the heavenly holy ones, the sons of heaven, the holy angels of the Lord, or the perfect ones. This is why scholars, academics believe that the book of Revelation is an Essene-based text, because it is based on the appearance of one of these rainbow light body beings who delivers the book of wisdom to John the Revelator. And the whole message is, is that this is the pathway through this time of revelation and disclosure. And this is our ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to receive this wisdom, activate these deep reservoirs of light and love within ourselves, see this golden cube shaped world, the new Jerusalem, and ultimately then to transform the planet into a planet based on light and love rather than fear, intimidation, and control, which is what we've got right now. These angels delivered the heavenly secret or mystery that resulted in the transformation of the Essenes' body into a supernatural substance or celestial flesh, as it's referred to in the Essene text. So what we're talking about is a disclosure by an extraterrestrial being, by an angel, an angel of the Lord, one of the perfect holy ones, about how we can become like them and ultimately then transform our planet. The Essenes sought this bodily and spiritual perfection in order to cross over a veil. And remember, apocalypse means the lifting of the veil or boundary to this celestial city, the New Jerusalem, the, the golden cube-shaped uh, world that is hovering, according to these texts, in Earth's atmosphere somewhere. And also, this knowledge enables us to commune with these beings, to stand united with the angels before God, and to live, as the Dead Sea Scrolls say, in a state of perfect light and love for all eternity. That's our goal. And at this moment, what you believe about ascension, resurrection, reincarnation, the path of your soul matters more than anything. 
a lot of us want to think about, oh, what am I going to do next week on my to-do list? What is my, my, my vacation plan for later in the year? What's my health plan? What's my retirement plan? Um, what is my shopping plan? You know, we all have all these, these plans on multi, multi uh, levels. But this is asking us a very even more important question, which is, what is your ascension plan? When it's time for you to leave this realm and make your transition into another realm, where are you going? And how are we going to get there? What the Essene teaching and, the, and also the teaching in the book of Revelation is saying is that there is a plan for us and that we can accelerate that plan by tapping into the wisdom of these rainbow angels and following the teaching that says, we already are those beings. This is our true self, our higher self, our divine nature. It's been covered over by false or negative perceptions and our focus of our attention on all the material and mundane things that occupy our lives from moment to moment while we're incarnate in one of these things. But the revelation is asking us to remember, hey, we all have a higher mission. And as we accomplish that mission, it transforms our planet and it ultimately helps us to fulfill our individual soul's ambition, which is to become more whole, to become more holy, to become more complete, especially through compassionate action and love that alters not only our life, our thoughts, our actions, but also that of everyone and everything that we come into contact with. Here's a, a wonderful seventh century tapestry that shows the rainbow angel of the Lord, one of the Essenes perfect angels manifesting before John the Revelator, handing him the book. And then John eats the book. <laughs> he, he eats the mushroom. He consumes the wisdom. He embodies the knowledge and wisdom, the light, the love, the frequency that's being transmitted from the higher frequency realms by this angel who has come specifically to assist John in his soul's evolution. So it's a beautiful image. And here you see with his outstretched hand, he's got the rainbow arcing above him, the angel does. Um, here's another example of the rainbow angel of the Lord. Uh, he's got a cloud for a body, fiery legs like bronze, it's described, rainbow around the body. And just above the head now, you can see the opening of, of the stargate, if you will, the, the portal opening, the rip in the fabric of space-time, the connection, the conduit to the higher frequency realm out of which this angel emerged. And you see him here standing beside uh, the, the rainbow. In this beautiful painting by Hans Memling, can you, can you find that rainbow angel of the Lord? Just take a look and see if you can point it out or, uh, or see it before I, I point it out to you. What, what we're looking at here, of course, is John the Revelator, who has now consumed the book. He's, he's sitting on the rock. He's got a book in his hand. We see a rainbow bridge uh, spanning a gap or a chasm. That is the rainbow bridge between the earthly material world and the higher frequency realm out of which the angels and, and the resurrected Christ uh, emerge. And as John is peering over that rainbow bridge, he is now receiving a vision of the resurrected Christ on his throne. And there you see now the angel of the Lord standing beside the rainbow. This is the whole purpose of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Essene mission was to have this vision of the resurrected Christ or the Lord on his throne. Uh, this is called celestial throne or Merkaba metaphysics. The word Merkaba means celestial chariot or celestial throne. And the Essenes were masters of this metaphysics that taught us how to expand our consciousness in order to have this experience of the Lord sitting on his rainbow throne. There was a throne of God, says Revelation. His servant stood in a place of perpetual heavenly light. 
Now, that's a beautiful description of this higher frequency realm out of which Christ and these angels emerge. And it's also where we're going and the light that we're bringing into our world to transmute the darkness that is all around us. The Essenes believed that this light would one day bathe the entire earth. And they, they talk about it in terms of a spirit, a Holy Spirit that would, would transmute the planet and everything that is on it. Um, we can think of this as sort of like um, in some, some contemporary traditions, they talk about moving from a 3D world to a 4D to 5D. So this is the, the 5D world that we're looking at here where we have these higher dimensional beings who exist in this higher frequency. And the goal is to merge our 3D world with that perpetual light of, of, of light and love from this 5D world. What that does is, is it opens up the way towards our acceptance into a new species of being, into the innumerable company of angels and just humans made perfect. This is uh, the book of Hebrews 12.22 specifically, which is another Essene mind map text. I think of these as ascension simulation texts, because as we read these, what we're doing is we're actually wiring our brain, wiring our consciousness into the story and the frequency of these beings. And this is, again, the value of thinking about our current events in light of the script or the drama that is described in the book of Revelation. So as we enter into this higher frequency realm, we now go from homo sapien into a new type of being, a just human made perfect, where just means righteous and balanced. Humans means a member of the species homo sapien, not animal, divine, or this is very important, machine. We are made, which means we're shaped or formed, and we're perfect, meaning complete, fully developed, whole, holy, 360 degree beings. This is our goal, is to become perfect in this way. And this is why the Essenes refer to themselves as the perfect ones, the perfect light humans, and so forth. It is a vibration that is within us that all of us can ultimately bring out from within ourselves. And that is our quest today is to find new tools, ways that we can tap into that vibration within ourselves that can transmute our world. So here in the detail, we see John the Revelator with the book, Gone Over the Rainbow Bridge, focusing on, uh, in this case, the resurrected Christ on his throne. Now, something very important about this Christian imagery is that it, it gives us some, some details that enable us to match the Christian concepts of this higher frequency uh, human with other traditions. So in this example here, for example, Christ is sitting on the throne and he's got his resurrection stick in his hand. He's got his crown of glory on his lap and he's got golden rays and rainbow light manifesting from within his body. This, these golden rays and rainbow light obviously represent our light body, our true selves, our, our uh, ultimate higher self, as I said earlier. And it matches precisely the way the Tibetans describe what they call the great perfection. And there's that word perfection again, where we, we become whole, holy, and complete beings and manifest our rainbow light body, which is the ultimate goal of Tibetan Buddhism. And in this image of Padmasambhava, one of the rainbow light body gurus, one of the rainbow angels, if you will, of the Tibetan tradition, he too, like Christ, has the resurrection stick, the crown of glory, the golden rays, and the rainbow light manifesting from his body. They are in exactly the same state of being. So it doesn't matter if we follow the Christian tradition or the Tibetan tradition or for that matter, uh, any of the others, such as the Egyptian especially, all the paths lead exactly to the same place and to the same teaching. Our true selves are not our physical flesh and blood bodies. Our bodies are only an image of the true, said the Gnostics. Christ's resurrection body and Padmasambhava's rainbow light body are our true selves. This tells us 
that this is the path we want to follow as opposed to what the book of Revelation describes the dragon wants us to follow, which is the image of the beast. The image of the beast is the material body, the synthetic body. The image of God is our rainbow light body, our true self. And this is a, an example here of an open eye meditation that you can begin to use now in your ascension process as a, as a trigger, if you will, for reminding us of our daily mission, which is to connect with this aspect of ourselves. Both the Christians and the Tibetans teach the same thing about these images. And I covered this in my workshop, The Art and Science of Living Ascension, which is available as a video course on my website, williamhenry.net. Both Christianity and the Tibetan Buddhism tells us that Christ and Padmasambhava are avatars, that they are energetic beings, and they are capable of transmitting the codes and vibrations of their rainbow light body through these images that we are looking at, especially when we're looking at the image of Christ and Padmasambhava in these examples where we can make eye-to-eye, soul-to-soul contact with these avatars. So by having these images on your desktop or on your phone, on the wall around you, you are literally, according to Tibetan teaching, invoking the presence of Padmasambhava. It's not just an image of Padmasambhava. Padmasambhava is present with us at this very moment. He's transmitting these codes and frequencies, and so is Christ. So as we continue to compare these images, we see that what we're offered here is a, is a mirror, is a, a sacred doorway to connect with the rainbow angels. Because some people believe that the, the rainbow angel of the Lord that manifested to John the Revelator was actually Christ manifesting on the earth plane, or most certainly within John's consciousness. So it's possible that, that John himself was invoking an image of the resurrected Christ, um, just as the Tibetans use the image of Padmasambhava to bring his presence into the world. Mm -hmm.